In this video, I want to talk about factoring a binomial expression using the difference of squares. So here we have a nice formula for the difference of squares factorization. So a squared minus b squared, so that's why we call it the difference of two squares. And it can be factored as the quantity a minus b times the quantity a plus b. And of course the order I put these two factors in does not matter since multiplication is commutative. So I could just as easily express it as a plus b times a minus b. But anyway, so let's go ahead and look at this first example. I want to show you why this works the way it works. So we're actually going to work backwards. So we're going to multiply this out first. So take this 2x and let's distribute them here and here. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared, and then 2x times positive 5 is plus 10x. And now let's move on to the next one. We have negative 5. We'll distribute here and here. So negative 5 times 2x is negative 10x, and then negative 5 times positive 5 is negative 25. Well, what do you notice that's interesting about this? Well, our middle terms here actually cancel. So I'm left with 4x squared minus 25, which in fact is the difference of two perfect squares. So to go backwards, you're going to ask yourself, what got squared to give me this 4x squared, and what got squared to give me this 25? Well, what got squared to give us 4x squared? Well, it was 2x. And what got squared to give us 25? Well, it was 5. So looking back at our formula, if we have the difference of two perfect squares, like we have right here when we multiplied, we can factor it by taking the square root of each of our terms and putting it into our factorization. So what will that look like going backwards? Well, we found out what got squared to give us this and what got squared to give us this, which means these are the square roots. So I'm going to put it into my factorization, 2x minus 5 and 2x plus 5. Okay, so here is our difference of squares factorization. So I worked it first using an example where I had the multiplication of two binomials, and the binomials happened to actually be conjugates of one another. They were exactly the same except the sign in the middle was different. So when we multiply, those middle terms cancel, and we're left with the difference of two squares, which then we worked backwards and factored them. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few more examples here. So let's do 49 x to the 8th minus 16, okay? So in order to factor this difference of squares, we need to ask ourselves the question, well, what got squared to give us 49 x to the 8th? And what got squared to give us 16? Well, the answer to these questions will give us our factorization. So what got squared to give us 49? Well, 7. And what got squared to give us x to the 8th? Well, it's going to be x to the 4th. Remember, because if you take x to the 4th and then square it, the power of a power property of exponents says we're going to multiply, so 4 times 2 is your 8. So in general, I'm going to say 7x to the 4th will be the square root of this. And of course, the square root of 16 is just 4. So how can I do my factorization for this difference of squares? Well, it's going to be those square roots, 7x to the 4th minus 4, and 7x to the 4th plus 4. So I'm going to write them as two binomials being multiplied together. One has a minus and one has a plus. And you can go ahead and distribute this out and you'll see those middle terms will cancel and you'll be left with this original binomial expression. In this next example, we have x to the 4th minus 625. So again, let's just go ahead and write our formula down. a squared minus b squared is, and then we have the factorization, a minus b times a plus b. So we need to ask ourselves, what got squared to give us x to the 4th, and what got squared to give us 625? Well, in order to square something to get x to the 4th, it had to be x squared, because again, the power of a power, 2 times 2 is 4. And the square root of 625 is 25. So I now have my a and my b, which can fit nicely into our formula. So I'll have x squared minus 25 and x squared plus 25. But you'll notice, perhaps, that we're not done. Because when I factor this one down, this is actually another 
difference of squares. Okay, so what's the square root of x squared? Well, x. And what's the square root of 25? Well, 5. So this difference of squares will factor down into x minus 5 times x plus 5, while the sum of squares does not have a factorization over the real numbers, so we'll just leave that alone for now. Okay, so here's our fully factored form for this original difference of squares, which when I factored this, I noticed that inside was another difference of squares. So here we go. In this final example for my difference of squares factorization, we're going to look at an algebraic expression that has just variables. And the first thing I notice is that both terms have m's and both terms have n's. So I can go ahead and factor out an m in, but how many should I factor out? Well, m to the ninth and m cubed, so it looks like 3 is the smaller, so let's pull an m cubed out. And then for my n, I have n to the sixth and n squared, so 2 is the smaller, so let's pull the n squared out. So dividing this greatest common factor out of each one of these terms gives me m to the sixth, n to the fourth, minus, looks like minus 1. So you'll see that this leftover expression here is in fact a difference of squares. And I know it because it's two terms I'm subtracting and each of these are perfect squares. So you'll know a variable is a perfect square if the exponent is even, and this one is a perfect square because one times one is one. So let's go ahead and keep this greatest common factor out. So our question is, what got squared to give us m to the sixth, n to the fourth, and what got squared to give us one? Well, the one is super easy, because it's one. So what we do to go backwards is we can just cut each one of these in half. So m cubed, n squared. Okay, because when I square each of those, I'll just double the exponents to get six and four, respectively. So let's go ahead and use then m cubed, n squared, minus one, and m cubed n squared plus 1. And this is my final factorization using the difference of squares here. We uh, pulled the greatest common factor out first and then did our difference of squares formula. So there's kind of an introduction to the way we use difference of squares factorization to factor any binomial expression whose terms are perfect squares.